Good morning. This is Bill from Curious Cars and Auto House of Naples on, you know, the trail end of a really shitty, muggy, nasty July. Uh, it has to be said, uh, you know, the humidity has made the month as bad as predicted and uh, it's just not getting any better. Uh, there's a lot of little thunderstorms coming along. It doesn't help. Uh, it's just why Florida is unfit for human consumption. Uh, in the uh, in the heydays of summer and uh, being stuck here, yeah, what are you gonna do? Uh, you know, don't get me wrong. I love Florida. I am happy to be here. I really, really am. There's no question about that. Uh, particularly at the moment when I think we're being run particularly well uh, in comparison to some other stuff. I'm not gonna get too much <laughs> into the political shit, but uh, look, I'm telling you, if you're down here right now. Uh, you're happy for the most part. I mean, the state is in pretty good shape. It's been doing pretty good for a while, and uh, everybody is pretty chipper. Uh, I can't uh, believe that's going to be said of all states. That said, uh, we do uh, suffer for that. At the moment, we are suffering because of the weather, and there's really nothing that can be done about that. And at the same time, I know I ramble on about the weather a lot, so I'm not going to go on too much more about that. That's, that's all I'm going to say. We'll get right into this. Well, we won't get right into that. Real quick, okay, look, I've done enough GMB bodies ad nauseum, so this is not really a car that I need to do a video on. This is why I'm calling this a quick take, and it will be. It will be. This will not be a 40-minute video. Uh, what I am doing is a quick rundown of this car, just for shits and giggles, but primarily as an excuse to tell you, uh, you know, give you a little bit of an update about where we're at. So, uh, it turns out that July has been a very busy month in terms of acquisitions. I haven't been around much. I haven't been uh, in Naples too much. In fact, I just got back from North Carolina, which was awesome, by the way. Uh, the weather there was fantastic. I mean, the first day I showed up, I walked out of the hotel, I don't know, a little before six o'clock, and there was this nip in the air that was just, oh my God, it was heaven on earth. It was like 66 degrees. It reminded me of the first days of season here in Naples, which are absolutely lovely and frankly amount to the whole reason anyone lives here at all. Uh, so it was a joy and I acquired a few cars there which are gonna go here on YouTube and it's gonna be terrific. And uh, that is the update, but uh, it's not coming up for a while. I mean, I know I've been promising a Cordoba forever and <laughs> it's still gonna happen. Uh, the Cordoba was almost ready and now it's delayed because of friggin' pinstripe of all things, but relax, the Cordoba is coming. In addition to that, I have gotten, uh, here's what's coming up from, uh, from Curious Cars slash Auto House. We have a 77 Monte Carlo, really nice car, a 77 Cutlass. I don't know if I should do those at the same time or not, but maybe. And uh, a 1975 AMC Matador, which may be the coolest car I've ever seen in my life. Although I will say my, um, my SO, uh, Tracy, you know, with her typical scathing ways. I mean, she is just a cruel and heartless, horrible person. Uh, whatever high I was riding on getting the 75 Matador, uh, she absolutely destroyed by calling it a Pinto on steroids. So I'm feeling very angry about that, but what are you gonna do? Uh, but anyway, that's a car that's coming up. Um, we also have a 81 Chrysler Imperial. <laughs> That's going to be a fantastic car. There's probably about seven of them left in the world. And uh, maybe a Beetle and maybe a Samurai, but we'll see. So uh, there's lots of neat cars coming up on the horizon. Unfortunately, they won't be up in the next few days because I've got uh, the Mecham auction is coming up this week. In fact, I'm leaving... Uh, Oh, God, I'm leaving tomorrow, and I'm sick to death of traveling at this point, but what the hell, you got to do what you got to do. So uh, there's a couple there, a couple cars there I'm going to try to get, and uh, we would do videos of those, and we'll see how that goes. But anyway, so I'll be driving up there. So probably nothing significant is going to come up till sometime next. Actually, next week is Daytona with Spec Miata Racing. I'll be leaving Thursday, so unless I can get some crap up before then, I'll try to. Um, this just really is a very busy time of year, so that's what's coming up. And uh, after Daytona, everything's free and clear, smooth sailing. Uh, we're going to jam out some videos. I also have another, uh, there's a Can-Am uh, coming up from Uncle 
Little Johnny, which is just like the coolest car I've ever seen. So uh, that's going to be neat as well. And um, whatever else I can track down. Uh, I'm getting dripped on right now, which is nice out of the trees. Uh, bird activity... Yeah, you know, I can hear them. They're going pretty nuts, but I haven't actually seen any, so they're hanging out in the trees, and uh, hopefully they'll stay there and not decide that today is the day uh, that they come and peck out my brains. Hopefully not. And um, otherwise, there it is. So anyway, as I've said, I've done bee bodies in this GM style ad nauseum. Uh, so this is going to be a very quick take of this car. Uh, this is a 1985 Oldsmobile Delta 88. Uh, it's a very significant car in some ways. Uh, the, the primary way to me that it's significant is it's the last full framed body on frame rear wheel drive rocket V8 powered a sedan that Oldsmobile made. Uh, this was it. After this, forget it. Uh, there wasn't anything else. Uh, the wagon carried on for a few years, and of course that was rear-wheel drive, body on frame, but it was the wagon. As far as coupes, sedans go, this was the end of it, 1985. In fact, quite a few of these 85s, or some of them anyway, were uh, collector's editions because they knew that would be the end. The 98 had been downsized for 1985, so that was no longer a player. Uh, this, this Delta 88, which was not their top-of-the-line model, but pretty close, uh, was the uh, the last real full-frame offering. And I think a lot of 98 buyers probably went to the 88 uh, if they needed a car in 1985. Uh, it's, again, on the B platform from General Motors, which could trace its roots all the way back to, like, 1926 uh, with some kind of Buick Master 8 or something. A very cool, very cool frame. Uh, and for many years, it was was their entry level frame, but not by the time this came out. This was not an entry level car. Uh, in fact, uh, the Dalt 88 was probably the car of choice for aspiring, you know, 20 year veteran bankers. They hadn't quite made it to the top or they'd go for a 98, uh, but after a few years of service, they were making money and they probably did the 90 or sorry, this 88. Uh, also, lawyers, that kind of thing. This was, look, this was before the days when everyone went out and bought Audis or Mercedes or German cars to show off their wealth. Uh, you know, a guy in 1985 uh, with a good job might still buy a car like this uh, to, um, uh, to fit into the uh, architecture of you know, where he should be at the time. I mean, even if you're making great money and you're young, you don't necessarily want to go buy an S-Class uh, or some other version of a car that's that's too much for your age. You do have to look the part. And uh, the 88 was that car for people who were, you know, getting pretty close to the top, but not quite there yet. Uh, <clears throat> this is a Royale, which of course they all were by 85, I suspect. Uh, although the Brome option, which this has, was not on every car and does add some neat stuff to this one. Uh, the B-Body platform was downsized in 77. <clears throat> in the middle of all that, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, just wonderful. <sighs> the whiskey takes its toll. But anyway, it was in the middle of all that GM downsizing crap that went on. But by 85, it was a pretty big car because there really everything had been downsized at that stage. Uh, so this one stood out from the crowd. Uh, it competed with the Ford's Panther platform, which would have been, you know, the Crown Vic, the Grand Marquis, the town car, uh, that sort of thing. The B-Body would have been, eh, well, this mid-sized car, this uh, 88. And uh, of course, there would have been a, a Buick and Cadillac version as well. Actually, I think Cadillac might have been a bigger version. but uh, And it finally sort of reached its pinnacle, this B-Body, uh, with the Roadmaster, if you remember that from Buick, and the Cadillac Fleetwood, and uh, the Impala, which all came to a screeching halt in 96. So that was the end of that. Arguably, and I still stand by this, I think the B-Body is a better platform than the um, uh, than the Panther. Uh, you remember the Caprice Classic. That would have been, I think, more beloved by the police, more beloved by the taxi companies uh, than the Panther at the time. But, you know, they gave it up. They gave it up in 85 other than the wagon. So where did those companies have to go but onto the, um, onto the Panther? So uh, that ruled the day. Oh, my God, all the way 
way through what 2010 or so uh, you know the limo companies were still running Panthers but I think this was a better platform not just in terms of styling because I do believe this has lovely styling uh, but in terms of the suspension the engine the way it went down the road it was just a nice car to drive and that's what holds true with this one uh, this is a um, this one's kind of convoluted. So it's an 85 Delta 88. It came from a Jeep dealership up in uh, Indiana. I had some arguments with them about the car. And uh, when I got the title, it was screwed up, which is really annoying. And I haven't been able to fix it. Uh, the car basically is 16,000 miles. But when the owners went to get a new title to trade it in, uh, they guessed at the mileage. And they said it had 18,000. So I've got an 18,000 actual mile title uh, that then this Jeep dealership filled out as 16,600 and X amount of miles. Well, the DMV isn't going to like that, you know. They're not going to accept that this car that has 18,000 actual miles on the title now somehow has 16. So uh, I've been trying to fix it, but it's probably not something I can fix, which means criminally this car is going to have to go with an exempt title, uh, which of course happens a lot in any car over 10 years old. So yeah, it's a shame. What are you going to do? But um, um, uh, we'll see. We're, we're still trying to get it fixed, but absolutely no guarantees. Uh, you can see the styling of the car is quite lovely. It's got a little bit of a hump up at the back, uh, a little bit of a hump up at the forward. If you follow the pinstripe lines, you can see that. Uh, again, I say in 1977, when they downsized these cars from what were enormous before it, it was probably one of the most successful downsizings. People didn't mind it because the interior room was still essentially the same. Uh, the trunk was still enormous. It still had V8 power and uh, more or less it kept everybody happy. Also, the suspension was great. You had independent front, you had coil springs in the back. Uh, it was a great handling car and it felt, okay, right, okay, look, fine. It's not a Porsche Cayman. That's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> what I mean is it's competent going down the road. It doesn't sway everywhere. It just has a nice feel to it. Uh, very smooth steering, very nice tracking on the highway. Uh, for a big, smooth car, it drives nice. And in fact, I think it drives nicer than the Panthers. And that's the point. So anyway, it didn't really hurt GM having these uh, downsized Caprices, Delta 88s, uh, Buick, um, what the hell would they have had? Park Avenues. I guess that was the bigger frame. Probably the uh, Buick um, um, the Masaber, if you will. You know, that was also a nice, smooth driving car, uh, of course. And look, again, in the last video I did of a, um, uh, what was it, that 73... Uh, no, sorry, it was the 68 Toronado. I inadvertently put in a picture of Henry Ford when I meant to put in a picture of Ransom uh, E. Olds. You know, I do know the difference, honestly. It just, you know, at my age, my whiskey levels, my stupidity, you have 50,000 thumbnails in a folder and you're putting them into the videos. Every once in a while, you make a damn mistake. I also don't have any nice young snowflake going after me to quality check me. So, you know, when I make a senior moment dementia thing, uh, Biden style, what happens is I end up putting a picture of Henry Ford instead of Olds. And uh, that's a shame. But anyway, there it is. So I apologize apologize for that. It won't happen again. For the love of God, please stop commenting. I get it. <laughs> I get it. I made that error. Uh, and Olds, of course, was a pretty cool guy. And uh, he made the first uh, moving assembly line. I know that Ford gets credit for the assembly line, uh, but uh, Ransom was a pretty neat guy. And uh, he came up with uh, a lot of innovations. And one of them was the actual motion activated assembly line where cars rolled down and got finished. So uh, he was a pretty cool cat. Uh, but of course, uh, GM probably ultimately destroyed him. Uh, anyway, the lines of the car are quite nice. I like the four lamps up front. I like the uh, square box grill. I like the big chrome bumpers. Uh, despite being five mile an hour style, they do fit the car well. Uh, I always make these executive decisions to keep the bug shields when these cars come in like this, even though I don't like the way it does date the car. I think it does show what the ownership was all about, and uh, the bug shield was pretty cool. Uh, being the Royale model, it also had the wire rims. It had the chrome down the bottom, which is all very nice. It had the impact strip. Uh, this one has a, a full vinyl top, which is nice. Uh, also, the, um, uh, what the hell do you call it? The uh, 
they, these little indicators, they give you your turn signals, your high beams, they let you know your lights are working, and uh, they are, um, oh, for the love of God. Anyway, whatever, it uses light to determine. It runs uh, the, the light cable. I, you know, these are the things that happen to old guys. And I'm only 49. I get that. You know, people have, have made comments saying, look, you're 49. Stop saying that you're old. For Christ's sake, stop saying that you're old because that makes me old. Well, damn it. You know, in my 20s, I drove a town car. This is a fact. So, I mean, don't compare yourself to me. I mean, I was old. I was, a, I was a Republican at like age nine. Okay. I golfed. I grew up in Naples, which is essentially uh, a retirement town. So I had aged feelings and aged <laughs> everything before the age of 20. I was basically uh, of retirement age in my, you know, in my thirties. So, um, what are you going to do? It is what it is, but, uh, you, you forget stuff and you go with that. So, uh, you know, maybe you're a much more youthful 49 than I I, but god damn it do I feel old and tired and then I'll be driving around I also by the way I'm gonna do a review of that pickup truck the one that I bought I'm in love with that thing now I wasn't before but I am now uh, it was very tough for me to give up that first Silverado uh, because I had such a love affair with that car uh, and uh, I was very hesitant to replace it but now that I have with a, um, a diesel model I, I have to admit that uh, I'm much more enamored that's what I took to uh, North Carolina so anyway with the idea of being a short video let's just jam on into this car like how it still has the GM keys and the Royale badge so you flip that up old school style uh, put in the second key another thing that we've lost and I miss and here you see an enormous trunk that would make any limo driver happy I mean this is big this is big. Uh, you'd be able to fit all kinds of crap in this thing, although it does have a little tiny spare tire. Uh, but there you see all the jacking hardware in the back, nicely towed or stowed away, the black carpet. You know, it was cheap. GM in the 80s was cheap. You know, they could have used a nicer finishing material than this little cheap black carpet. But whatever, it's fine. It's just a trunk, and it's all it needs to be. Uh, there you see the wire wheel cover instructions. You see the jacking instructions. And then uh, these stickers you can find on most GM cars of the era. Uh, all those little RPO codes, the production codes, uh, tell you the equipment that this particular car came with. Sometimes you see them in the glove box, sometimes in the trunk, uh, but they're a nice uh, idea to get the feeling for how the car was equipped. So uh, anyway, there it is. Nice, enormous trunk in here and uh, everything <coughs> as it should be. Oldsmobile. Very sad that that's gone, really. Doesn't seem fair. If only Oldsmobile had been popular in China, it would still be around now, like Buick. All right, have a look under here. Oh my God. Okay, so here it is. One of the last of the Rocket V8 engines. Again, they continued on in the wagon, I think, unless they just went to Chevy. And Chevy was a bit of, you know, when these cars came out, they started putting Chevrolet engines in some of them. And uh, the guys who bought Oldsmobile were not particularly happy about that. In fact, it even led to a program uh, where a guy who had bought a Chevy V8 Olds without really realizing it could trade it back in and uh, get a uh, Oldsmobile V8 power if he wanted to, but he'd pay for it, you know, depending on how many miles he'd done. So uh, the program wasn't hugely utilized, but uh, it does say something about the way things used to be, that that had to be a thing. You know, people in this day were at the tail end of you know, they were loyal buyers. The guys who bought Oldsmobiles wanted Oldsmobiles. They wanted the Oldsmobile engine. Same with the guys who bought Cadillacs. Same with the guys who bought Buicks. Uh, when GM started sort of corporatizing all of that up and putting corporate V8s in them, uh, that didn't go down smooth. That wasn't very easy for them to live with. And um, people, uh, people were pissed off about it. You know, one could argue that it's something GM had to do to become a modern car company, uh, much in the way Mercedes had to give up everything that was good about Mercedes to become a modern car company. Uh, but, um, yeah, you know, it was a bitter pill for a lot of people to swallow. Uh, anyway, you can tell that this is the 307 V8 Olds by virtue of this uh, lifted up tower oil filler thing. You're not going to see that on a Chevy. And uh, that means that this is the 350 Rocket V8. Is it the 350? Sorry, 305. Forgive me for that. 307. God, what is the matter with me? 
anyway, the famous old Olds 307. And, you know, by 85, it's putting out like 140 horse. It's not really that much of a rocket, uh, but it certainly does have uh, pretty good torque. And uh, I do believe this one has a limited slip and a tow uh, package, so it's a bit heavy duty, which is all very nice and proper. Uh, also good cold air in here and everything lovely. And there's a variety of engines that came in these b I mean, a ton of them. For even a little while, the standard engine was a diesel, which was dreadful. Uh, it was a converted gas motor, and nobody liked it because it freaking broke all the time. But uh, but anyway, probably the best engine in a B-body, and not just because I have this car here, uh, is this 307 Olds. I think it was better than the 305. It's arguable about the 350 in the Chevy, uh, you know, because, of course, that's a fine motor. Uh, but I think the 307 Olds is amongst the best of the best. You could get a 403 in some of the earlier ones, which was pretty peppy, uh, but still the same basic architecture as this. And uh, one could argue because it's bored out a little bit more, maybe not as reliable. So uh, this of all motors would be the one that I would be happy to see uh, when I open the hood of one of these. It also goes through a turbo hydro tra turbo hydromatic transmission. I believe a 200 R4 in this car, the four speed. Uh, earlier ones would have had a more bulletproof three speed, but this um, and this four speed ain't bad. So anyway, there it is under the hood. All very nice and lovely. I tell you what I'm going to do. This is where I'm going to get all my crap inside the car and uh, get myself ready to go. And then we're just going to hop in and go for a drive. I love it. This is going to be a short, finally, a video under 30 minutes. Almost for sure. For sure. But I guarantee you when I do that Matador, yeah, you know, that one's going to be, that one's going to be pretty long. So anyway, hold on a minute. We'll keep going. All right, stuff inside, so we're ready to go. Uh, this is probably one of the last cars that had that um, nice hidden uh, gas cap behind the uh, fuel. <sighs> had the gas cap, uh, gas fill behind the license plate. I think this is probably one of the last cars that had that. And it's a nice feature because, of course, you can pull up to a gas pump any way you damn well want to. You don't have to think about whether you're on the driver or passenger side. And very quickly, that is, by the way, the correct way to describe which side of a car. Uh, if you're talking to your shop or your service writer or something, talk about driver and I know it's different in Europe. But even then it works because it's the same thing. If you start talking about left and right side of cars, you would be amazed how many people screw that up. You know, or is it when I'm looking at it? Is it when I'm behind the wheel? You know, it's just one of those things. And by the way, I'm still threatening to do the, um, uh, there's two more types of videos I'm threatening to do. One is I, I could do like a two hour video on interstate etiquette, particularly after driving up to North Carolina the other day. I mean, what the hell is the matter with people in terms of driving in your blind spot, varying speeds, hogging the left lane or the right lane. I mean, people are just driving like nitwits these days and it drives me insane. So. Uh, I just feel like everybody should be into a forced re-education camp on driving, and uh, I think it would be a great thing for everybody. <sighs> but uh, we'll see how that goes. And secondly, I've been flirting with the idea of doing uh, car movie reviews. I know that's kind of silly, but a friend of mine, Robert, suggested it, and he's, you know, not a frivolous guy, but... Uh, uh, we were at um, Sebring a few weeks ago, and we watched a couple. We watched this. Uh, I'd never seen that cartoon movie Cars, which was, yeah, it was cute, whatever. And uh, we watched the Cannonball Run and some other. And, and anyway, he thought it would be fun to do a movie review. So maybe. I don't know. We'll see. I don't know what the hell I'd say. And it would probably just irritate anyone. But um, anyway, let's just get into this. So you see it as the full vinyl top, this car, all very nice. You see the Brome Royale badging. That's, uh, you know, for the uh, upmarket. Uh, protection, this thing, protection. I say that because I'm looking at the Z-Bart sticker. Uh, for the upmarket package this had, the, the Z-Bart thing, I think, you know, is a rust proofing that was very popular in the 60s, 70s, 80s, but I think they got class action sued out of existence. But um, anyway, all very nice. You see the chrome on the bottom is lovely. Uh, I, when this car came in, one of the pieces had come off or something. I, I, it came in without one. It took me forever to track it down. It was a pain in the ass, uh, but we did finally find one. And uh, I do like the chrome door handles with the body color inserts and the impact strip and you know it's all very chromey without being too much uh, I also like the locking wire wheel covers that's really a thing of the uh, 
the 80s was the uh, end of that for the most part. Uh, in the back, your Canadians, they're going to be pretty damn chipper. Uh, again, even though this was basically a downsized GM platform, it still had plenty of legroom. And uh, in the uh, Caprice Classic police cars, your criminals in the back, you could fit a bunch. It was no problem. So I think they had fiberglass seats they could be thrown up on and such, but you still had good legroom. Uh, very nice little accoutrements, you know, typical GM 80s where it's all out of sort of an Austrian bordello with fake wood and chrome and poles and furry vinyl and furry velour and that sort of thing, but still very nice. You had ashtrays for either passenger, um, you had your uh, power window switch and, you know, everything as it should be, even a little bit of wall-to-wall -wall carpeting on the bottom and a very nice and deep pile. Uh, do we have map pockets? No, none back there, so man, the hell with your Canadians. They apparently don't even get a goddamn armrest, so they're not going to be happy about that, but uh, if you need three of them, they got them. And because it's this Royale Brougham thing, uh, you do get this pillow uh, stuff at the top, which uh, you wouldn't have gotten in a lesser model. So anyway, all very nice in there. <clears throat> Okay, inside up front, same thing. Uh, here's your Brome Royale badging on the fake wood with the little vinyl pull handles with more chrome and more fake wood and uh, your lock and unlock and your power windows and your remote mirror and someone's texting me. Uh, this has a split bench seat, 60-40, 40 on the uh, driver's side with uh, six-way power, all very nice. And of course, your body by Fisher uh, emblem on the uh, skid pad. Uh, love this. This little teeny skinny thin steering wheel, you know, a throwback to better times, uh, also with tilt and with cruise and with, you know, the fancy washer setup. Yeah, it's just all, all very nice. Let's fire this thing up. AC in this car is pretty damn good. So we're going to get that going. I won't put it on too high so it doesn't overpower the camera. Uh, but there you see this nice big expansive hood in front of you. Uh, there's your uh, light indicators and I still can't remember what the hell I'm trying to say even though it's a very common standard. Oh my god, what is the matter with me? Um, Oh, it's driving me crazy. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I should almost pause and look it up just so I don't go nuts. But um, but anyway, what it, it uses strands of light running the length of the car <clears throat> to indicate that the bulbs are still working. So when I turn on the lights, you probably can't see it, but there's a light indicator. When I hit the high beams, there's a high beam indicator. And then when I hit the signals, they flash. Uh, that way, not only do you know what's on, although I will say a million old guys from Ohio never saw that and made the entire rundown. I 75 without noticing that uh, as their left blinker was blinking in the left lane going 68 miles an hour in a 75. Uh, but uh, anyway, there it is and uh, it's there if you need it. Uh, you also have a nice old Oldsmobile, uh, uh, I don't know if that's the sunburst, whatever the hell it is, the Oldsmobile hood ornament and of course the bug shield keeping you safe from large insects. Uh, down in the dashboard, other than this lovely little thin steering wheel, you've got a lovely swept uh, 85 mile an hour speedo. There you see just 16.6 on the clock of this thing. And uh, again, it shows 18 on the title, screws everything up, but that's what happens when you go into the DMV and guess what the mileage is, and they record it officially, so that's kind of a shame. Uh, anyway, your lights are down there. There's your tilt. You've got a column shifter for that TH404 uh, uh, four speed. Uh, you got a row of warning lights on either side of these vents. You've got your uh, climate control here. Uh, you've got a digital clock that's incredibly still working, which is great. Uh, here's an AM FM. Uh, unfortunately, no eight track, no cassette, eh, middle of the road probably for the time, uh, but it works good and the power antenna works. To a world of exclusive entertainment, including ad free and ad exclusive. Oh, that. Duncan's Diamonds. Come. There we go. Yeah, it sounds like something I'd listen to. But anyway, there's your remote mirror for the uh, passenger side. Here's your rear defrog, and here is a cigarette lighter. <clears throat> All very nice stuff. And then a, a tiny little glove box over there, which is interesting, and a little vent underneath it. And uh, I do believe that's a manual passenger seat. Very standard-looking GM mirror and very standard-looking sun visors. So let me get my signal. Signal on. Seatbelt on, and then we're uh, gonna go for a spin. 
Okay, and here is the okay. Here is the crux of this car. Uh, the driving is so nice. It is such an absolute cruiser. And this is where I say that this uh, B body had it all over the Panther platform, which is also a great cruiser, no doubt about that. Hands down, the Panther is great. But I think the B body was better. It just had a smoother, you know, it felt like a bigger car and a smoother car to me than the Panther did. But um, GM, of course, you know, in their infinite wisdom, uh, kept it around till 96. They made the Caprice Classic really unattractive. Tried to fix that a year later, but uh, it certainly didn't help things. And uh, the Panther just blew the shit out of it for that reason. Uh, Dalton, of course, did a very crappy job detailing this car as he's wont to do. Um, you know, we're not getting the windshield nastiness right now, but you know, I promise you it could have been a lot better. But that's what you get with Dalton. And um, as you know, there were some changes at Auto House. Uh, Peter sold out. He sold the place to new owners. They're very nice people. And I'm, you know, starting to get along with them and took some time to figure it out. But Auto House is basically my home base and has been for, um, you know, there was that little stint at Auto Europa. But I mean, I helped Peter put Auto House together way back in, oh my God. I, I mean, it's a long convoluted story, incestuous and everything else. but. Uh, we kind of, you know, P Peter was the main guy, but I helped him put Auto House together back in 2010 and uh, went on there for a few years, adding my little bits and pieces, and uh, then left to do Auto Europa with uh, Marty, which was a giant error for everybody, and uh, then came back, and after about six, seven months, the guy sells out. I'm like, oh, you gotta be shitting me. Now what? But, uh, you know, that said, it seems to have all come together pretty good and uh, we're moving forward and I'm getting to keep uh, Auto House as my home base, at least until I can join Peter and lighting cigars with $100 bills, you know, belly laughing with cars full of high-end prostitutes in foreign countries. So, uh, God bless him. <laughs> I promise you there's no, there's no hatred at all in that statement. None. Nice torque from that V8. Again, we're talking about, oh, you can hear the secondaries. Yeah, shitty horsepower rating for sure, uh, but still pretty good torque. And uh, it gets up and moves. You're not gonna have any trouble, you know, joining the highway speeds on an on-ramp or keeping up with traffic. And that is one reason why I like these cars now as collector cars, you know? They're old enough, and the 80s are a little bit hot at the moment, I think, at least based on the prices I'm seeing. Uh, but they're old enough to get noticed, you know? I have people People still giving me the thumbs up in this thing. I had a guy come over and look at it at the gas station yesterday, which I hate, by the way. I absolutely hate attention. I could never drive one of those Porsche Speedster replicas or a Cobra replica because of that. But, um, but that said, you know, people dig it. It's it's cool, and it doesn't look like things on the road anymore. And even though they used to be everywhere, now you don't see any at all. Maybe up north, but certainly not down here in Naples, where you know people are terrified of having a car older than three or four years in case the God knows they might get ejected from the country club. So uh, you just don't see too many of them. And it's a nice diversion on the road. And on top of that, this full frame, body on frame, coil spring, heavy V8 thing uh, makes for an awesome cruiser. An awesome cruiser. I mean, you feel like you're sitting on a lovely, soft, lazy boy chair. You've got no vibration at all from anything. You've got over-assisted brakes, over-assisted steering on this lovely little thin steering wheel, which is just all very nice. Uh, and uh, it just is a lovely car to drive around. It really, really is. And uh, that to me, and by the way, it's modern enough to be um, something you could drive across the country if you wanted to. I mean, it's very reliable. There's no parts in it that are particularly hard to find, at least not mechanically. You just go to the advanced auto parts store and get basically anything you need. So, uh, so it's just a very rewarding entry level collectible, uh, a fun car to have, a fun car to drive around. And uh, even if you want to take one on a trip, it's going to be more comfortable than most of the Korean crap that people are driving now. So. Anyway, there it is. I, I'm not going to go on and on and on and on, but I'll just again say that there's some really fun stuff coming up. Uh, you bear with me. There's not going to be much here for the next uh, 
few days, maybe even the next week or so. I'm going to try to fit in one or two if I can. Uh, but uh, after uh, Daytona is over at the end of next week, hold on. <laughs> We're going to have a lot of fun stuff coming. And uh, I've got, God, I've probably got 10 to 15 cars on the agenda still. So uh, there it is. Uh, thank you very much for having a look at this wonderfully abbreviated video. If this is over 30 minutes, I'm going to freak out and just say I'm just not capable of anything less at this point. But I think it won't be. I think we're going to be in the 20s on this one. And uh, everything's going to be good. So, uh, appreciate you having a look. Bear with me. Yes, the Cordoba's coming and uh, all the other stuff. And uh, thank you, as always, for watching. Really, really appreciate it. Take care and we'll see you with the next one.